Hey man, I've sent you a VTAT, Veil Touched Armor Transport from the Ravage Star range of miniatures. Paint it up however you like. I can't wait to see what you do with it. Just whatever you do, don't loot it. Honestly, please, just don't loot it. That's a nice looking tank. Sure would be a shame if someone carefully disassembled it with debonder and a sharp, fresh knife. Whoops, I broke it. Right, this is a pre-production resin print. Breaking is the only language it understands. It's hammer time! The final motto will be PVC. Maybe easier to work with, but this was more fun. Press like if you like fun. I'll save this piece for another project. To properly rebuild this tank for looting, we need to consider the wonk factor. Parallel lines and perpendicularity are for the birds. We want a true orc wonk. Watch me. Watch me wonk this track. Wonk. Affix wonkified halves with popsicle sticks and then clamp the lid down. Hey, not so fast, mister. Let's also set that all a kilter. A nicely layered section of printer plastic, beautifully sliced and snapped, will raise the upper part of the hull and also fill the gap. Rapid fire weathering via tiny files and various knife gougings. All this gouging is making me want to simulate some flame torch cuts. So I do that too with many, many slices along the top edge. Slap these on at an angle and then on it goes. Also kind of bowed out and wonky, just very deliberately so not perfect that it just has a giant hole in the back. This is just an excuse to build a massive engine machine out of random junk. Lid thing and then this apple juice propeller pruned down and capped with this mini pump top. Another one and wow, I am getting exhausted by all these pipes. <laughs> Great pun, but we almost forgot about the bit and you just can't do that. It's all about the bit. Another exhaust. Oh, great. A Mega Bloks vent and then a busted Hot Wheels chunk, followed by a cap and coffee filter stack crammed on this plastic plug. Cute Mega Bloks Barbie plant pot and then that thing you use to hang a picture, hoping it won't fail. Rounded Mega Bloks as rear skid plates or something, appropriately pre weathered. More great news onto that Hot Wheels component than a thing I can't identify. Help me, help me in the comments. Leave a comment. Rubbery garden wire because. I hate when paint sticks to my builds, but hey, at least it's flexible. I weave in a few gauges, then slice the soap pump straw donuts to break up all that boring mega cabling. We actually want it to look more like pipes in the end. Prepare multiple chunks of mega blocks and a bread tab. Use the drill a bit here, maybe a scrap of printer plastic. Oh yeah, the vice grip crush texture. Then a fix in this somewhat underwhelming montage. Blop, blop, blip, blop. Blip, 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 blip. I broke apart a controller in a video that isn't out yet, and these directional buttons will make a very dangerous smashing bumper. Round plastic chunks underneath, and this mirror holder thing in the center with Megablox curves on either side. Watch out! Don't get smashed! All these nice panels need to look like they're attached somehow, so I bust out the green stuff and... Okay, do you recognize this bent aluminum can tool? That's right, my friends! I'm adding some weld bead lines, just like my famous uncle. Quick restonk on the bits in the back rooms, and we're back in the workshop. Help me escape the back rooms in the future by subscribing today. Subscribe. Gotta make a DACA holder, aka the turret of the tank. I'll repurpose the old smasher part and bulk it out with a razor cover. Wait, I need more continuity. Give me that hatch. Prune and assemble the foundation with popsicle stick reinforcement, and then we need DACA. Stat, search the bins. The main cannon is a stack made from some paper shredder and medical components topped with this very slightly tapered cylinder lid and a little grommet, or whatever it's called. Plunk. These exhaust stacks make some nice shooter barrels. See ya. Just carefully drill the end to make a nifty looking muzzle. Mega block cylinder with minor sawing to fit the turret shape, and then the other barrel stuck on below that. Okay, that's good DACA, kinda, but I need another cannon. This probably medical tube with a Mega Bloks hockey puck in there, eh? Just need to do this elite gluing technique and then prune the whole thing down. Some circuitry semicircles to flank the main cannon barrel and then we're off to Armor Village. Printer plastic chunks to represent some large cast steel elements. Then we have these nice curved pieces cut and attached at the ideal angle to give an aesthetically pleasing turret profile. Now slap on that neat cast looking piece and also these other bits that I cut and weathered off screen. Little metal bands made of plastic to tie it all together. Okay. Unreleased custom resin cast SB resin panel products. 
Oh yeah. Mega blocks thing and printer tab bit and this cute little piece that seemed like a hinge. A another band? Whoa, there it goes. Let's cut a cardboard apology for when we gently persuaded the hatch to leave the tank body and go up on the turret. Tiny corrugated stripe combined with more unreleased panel kits and neat bits of plastic metal to clamp it down. Gaps! I gotta glop some model paste in there. I use a wet brush to like smush it all up in there. Okay, phew, no more gaps. Speaking of gaps, we got teeth. Why and how did I make these teeth? Next level plier grasp carving maneuver to prevent hand slicage. What does that hand slicage look like, you might ask? Here, look. Wait, no, I can't show that. After just working out that slightly curved pointy boy, I round down the edges and apply some battering and weathering via a small file. See? I now just literally glued the teeth into place so that I have teeth on the turret. Oh, look at this cute little guy. Maybe I should detail this whole thing now. Here's some grating on the derriere, and now suddenly more teeth, lightly sanded, so they look less like stuck on plastic chunks. The whole tank body just needs more plastic paneling, and also this lightsaber chunk to change the silhouette. When I was preparing these pieces, the plastic almost tore, which makes for some nicely jagged rear fenders. More panels, and more teeth too, because you just can't have enough. Unlock the secret puzzle box of rivets for your free pass to Rivet Town. Witness this overindulgent stop-motion xylophone montage of rivet placement. Uh, oh, wait, this isn't Bill making stuff. I rivet up lots of places with normal footage and then probably forget some as well. The nut and bolt style rivet are one of my favorites. And remember, place the rivet, place the glue, then slide them into place. I suppose rivet detailing counts as detail, so while I'm detailing, I also add this tangle of yo-yos into the bit and this other car piece thing onto the coffee filter stack canister. Now this engine looks like it will really work, but does it even have to really work? Oh no, I almost forgot the lore. I fill up the body of the tank with plenty of lore, and there's just enough left over to fix the turret too. Fake glue bloop. I rivet the turret since I've got it in hand. Each tooth gets a nice rivet at the base, just like in real life. Oh boy, this turret top riveting is really bringing it all together. Oh, whoopsie, looks like they missed one. A fake rivet hole looks good in this cast. Oh, right. I said this was meant to be cast metal. I guess I need to invent metal texture. Tamiya putty from Japan. And this, aromatic scented liquid to thin it. Blop and stipple that goop all over the cast panel for epic texture, oh, my friends. It cures very quickly, and then I knock back some of the lumpiness with sanding. Check that out. Do you think the orcs respect these brittle chaotic arrows? I don't. Let's snap a few away to make that authentic pre-looting battle damage complete. In fact, this whole tank is now complete. Do you agree? Not me. What? Why not? I'm in my prime. I prime the tank, under duress, so now it's ready for paint, I guess. These are the products and paints that I invented and I will <laughs> use to magnificent effect. I make a metal paint combo and then grayify it with black and white inks. Some metallics don't have great coverage, so I do this to compensate, slightly. Aggressively overbrush that onto everything, quickly obliterating any shading achieved in the zenithal prime. A more lighter silver brushed onto that mechanical engine zone, and then, uh, look at that, it's so metal and shiny. Perhaps too shiny. Old school matte. Is bringing this matte out fan service at this point? I'm not sure. Anyway, I quickly invent a new concoction called Veiled Star Wash, using the highest quality SB products. That goes on real smooth. Now the metal has parts that are darker. The wash is dry now. Can I still monetize the video if the paintbrush stabs? Oh, psych. It was just red paint all along. <laughs> if you haven't seen any of my videos ever, or at least none of my most recent and succinct painting tutorials, this is how I paint red. Just don't paint the edges. Yep, I work up a few layers, even though my custom SB red blend is pretty opaque. I just like a few coats. They don't even have to be thin. I periodically clean the brush to showcase this mug. Get the mug. Keep going and never paint the edges. It can take quite a while to paint all the individual panels with this method, but the clear benefit is that the finished product will convince thousands of people that you A, know what you're doing, and 2, that you are good at it. Once the red color and thickness is to your liking, you can proceed to modulation. It was to my liking, so here I am, making a dark, dark red glaze. SB varnish is really important in this one. To apply, I just wet up the entire panel with water and then drag and paint the glaze downward. I might be using the wrong terms here, but I basically wash and shade the lower portion of each panel with a m modulating glaze. Some panels will be black and not red. I make my own paint, which for legal reasons is known as Black 4.0. 
apply that, avoiding the edges. Easy peasy. Now some white mixed up in this dirty looking pot using a highly inaccurate squirting technique. Uh, why am I like this? Apply to white zones like teeth, avoiding the edges. The reason I used ink and paint is so that the consistency is thin enough for more fine brushwork, but still highly opaque. After tooth whitening and select panel painting, I use up the rest of the white to sketch on some rough orky checkers, a completely required aesthetic. I know the checkers look a bit rough, but please keep in mind that these are being painted by someone who really doesn't care about painting. Or the in-universe explanation would be these were painted by like a grot or something. A thin yellow paint invented in the same way as the white is roughly painted onto the rammer slash smasher. A bit of normal black paint and then this child's foam brush modified to make my latest Kickstarter exclusive brush. This one even comes with a small storage tin. The flat surface makes the ideal warning stripe. A few touch-ups and then the rammer is completely safe. Now if you get smashed, it's your own fault. Metallics. Copper for heat discoloration and various detail highlights. Gold for even more heat discoloration on the shootas and exhaust pipes. A light whitish gold to base the remaining chaotic brass bits. Wait, I can't really say chaos, can I? Because these are Ravage Star Armies of the Veil Touched, a custom line of physical miniatures brought to you by Mini Wargaming and Lazy Squire Games. Link in description. And a bright silver for the base of the tracks. Okay, there are just three more steps. Step one, dirty wash. Custom dark brown mix that gets applied in many places, but primarily as a tint for the lower part of any white panels and the super safe smasher. Step two, rust wash. Orange with official SB products and tan. Don't waste it. Applied to the top half of white panels and also lots of metal elements because it's rust. Step three, the vertigrice. Vertis, vertis geese? <laughs> Vertig the minty green copper oxidization that I will use on the brass. I assume brass does this too. I'm not going to look it up. Step four, heat discoloration with a red dry brush over the gold and a blue dry brush over that. Step five, airbrush straight from the drawer. My special latte mix of white ink, varnish, and brown. Sign the old school mat and then just spray fairly indiscriminately kind of at the bottom edge. Now the tank is dusty in appearance. Step F. Visit Rabbit Star. Behold their amazing new minis. They're even making their own game. You know me, I'm not some shill that will sell out and just advertise anything for a buck. But when Canadian Warhammer Markiplier says he wants to send you custom minis to destroy, I, I mean build, you just gotta go for it. Link in description. Is this thing orky enough for you? You know, this isn't even my Orktober build. Leave a comment that says Orktober when. Hey, I'm also not going to stop you from commenting Titan when. But if you comment both, I might just get confused. I won't know which when to when. Comment Titan when, Orktober when. Go check out Ravage Star Armies of the Veil Touched, linked in the description. H hey, do you think we can get Dave to send me more tanks? I'd be happy to loot another one, even if he asks me not to. <laughs> no regrets.